Welcome back to Taiwan Outlook. Our guest today is Dr. Jose Wu, Taiwan's former ambassador to the United States. Dr. Wu, we talk about uh, President Bush's uh, arms sale policy to Taiwan, but he's an outgoing president. Mm -hmm. And there are two gentlemen now competing for the White House. Uh, 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 and but apparently uh, there are some differences, but also similarities in their China mm -hmm. and Taiwan policy. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Well, the, the way I see the uh, American foreign policy toward uh, China or Taiwan or the cross trade relations is that uh, there might be small differences in the, the two camps. Mm -hmm. But overall speaking, uh, the U.S. foreign policy toward the cross trade relations have been quite consistent ever since 1972 when Shanghai mm -hmm. Communique mm -hmm. uh, was signed in between the United States and China. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, uh, the United States uh, recognized China uh, as a uh, you know, sole legal representative representative of whole China without recognizing that you know, China or the PRC has sovereignty uh, over Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, the United States also maintained very good unofficial relations mm -hmm. with Taiwan yeah. and is safeguarded by uh, the Taiwan Relations yes. Act. And on the one hand, the United States opposes any use of force by the PRC uh, toward uh, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, the United States also uh, sell defensive articles to yeah. Taiwan according to the spirit and the words of the Taiwan Relations Act. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that policy has been uh, going on ever since 1972. And uh, if you look at the, all the presidents of the United States after 1972, uh, some of them may be considered more friendly to Taiwan mm -hmm. or some of them might be considered more friendly to China. But basically, they, they follow the pattern. Mm -hmm. And that pattern has been there. And as far as they can can see the future president may not break away from this mm -hmm. pattern or what the U.S. has been describing as mm -hmm. one China policy in general. Mm -hmm. But there might be small differences in between the, the, the two camps. Uh, for example, uh, Mr. Obama has been campaigning on uh, trade issues, and he's been considered uh, that he's against uh, trade deals with other countries. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if he's in power, uh, he may not want to consider FTA, the free trade agreement with Taiwan, yeah. in the first year or the second. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you look at McCain, uh, he uh, has been advocating free trade uh, mm -hmm. with other countries, mm -hmm. even though he doesn't sp speak it uh, very clearly on the free trade agreement in between Taiwan and the United States. But that might be one area that we can look forward to, to have a new uh, dialogues with the United States mm -hmm. for free trade agreement, or at least for the launching of the talks of the free trade agreement in, in between our two countries. Mm -hmm. And some of uh, Mr. McCain's uh, advisors on foreign policy areas mm -hmm. are our very good friends. And mm -hmm. they are very friendly to Taiwan. And therefore, in the initial phase, we might enjoy uh, better relations with McCain. That's uh, lots of people's expectations. Yes. But we also have good friends uh, within Obama's camp. And some of them have served in the Clinton administration before, and they mm -hmm. are also our good friends. So in that area, they might only be uh, small differences, mm -hmm. but people are trying to use a uh, you know, microscope to <laughs> look at the differences in between the two sides. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the experience, that might also tell some story. Mm -hmm. McCain has been dealing with foreign policy or defense policies for a long time. He's more experienced in foreign policy. It, that's right. And he knows Taiwan. And he's always been supportive of Taiwan. And in contrast, uh, Mr. Obama hasn't done anything on foreign policy areas. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't spoke about you know, Taiwan at all. But how and, about his vice presidential candidate, you know, Biden? You know, some people have concerns about Biden's position uh, towards Taiwan. That's right. You know, some people are thinking that uh, maybe Mr. Biden, uh, Senator Biden, is not friendly to Taiwan uh, enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is one area the diplomats of Taiwan has been working very hard on. Uh, we try not only to get engaged with senators and congressmen, but we also try to get engaged with uh, their foreign policy advisors, mm -hmm. their economic advisors. And I think Mr. Uh, Biden's uh, key foreign policy advisor is a very good friend of ours. We invited mm -hmm. him to give us a talk at uh, our office in Washington, D.C. We also invited him to Taiwan to give talks uh, to a lot of people, and mm -hmm. we also give chances for him uh, to meet with our key uh, 
you know, policymakers mm -hmm. in Taiwan during his trip to Taiwan. And therefore, we hope that uh, through his advisors, who advises Mr. Biden on foreign policy areas, mm -hmm. that Mr. Biden can uh, be friendly to Taiwan as well. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, uh, Mr. Biden, even though he doesn't speak it out uh, very clearly, uh, he concerns about Taiwan's security and he opposes China's use of force or China's threat to use of force mm -hmm. uh, against Taiwan. And in that regard, I think we can find a good friend in Mr. Biden. Mm -hmm. I think in, in both Democrats and also Republicans uh, platform, campaign platform this time, they all mentioned that the future of Taiwan should be decided by the people or with the same people in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So is that a growing consensus now in the States? I think that is a growing consensus in the United States. Um, I still remember in the 19. 98, when the, Mr. Clinton mm -hmm. uh, was the president of the United States, he made it very clear that there are key pillars mm -hmm. of the American foreign policy mm -hmm. in dealing with the cross relations and the ascent of the Taiwan people in the resolution in between Taiwan and China is one of the most fundamental pillars of mm -hmm. American policy toward yeah. the cross trade relations. And that has been uh, the cornerstone of the American foreign policy, mm -hmm. recognizing that Taiwan is already a democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, even though the Bush administration doesn't repeat the same sentence, but President Bush himself has said it uh, three, mm -hmm. in three separate occasions mm -hmm. in Kyoto, in Australia, and in the Czech Republic, that Taiwan is already a democracy, and mm -hmm. Taiwan is a success story, or Taiwan is a beacon of democracy for mm -hmm. other countries uh, to learn from. And I think if he can say that, that means very clearly mm -hmm. that things concerning the future of the country has to be determined by the people of this country. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, growing, it's a growing consensus among those people who mm -hmm. understand Taiwan uh, that Taiwan is already a democracy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, when I was in Washington, D.C., it, it's not difficult for me at all to tell them that since Taiwan is already a democracy, mm -hmm. the future settlement in between Taiwan and China needs to have the assent of the Taiwan people. And mm -hmm. that should be the consensus among the American friends who understand that Taiwan is already mm -hmm. a, a democracy. Mm -hmm. And as a result of democracy, now we have a new administration, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Ma administration. And after his uh, uh, taking office, he made his first transit visit mm -hmm. to the United States. Unlike the previous one, he was very low profile and making a quiet visit to the States. What's the message that he, uh, the President Ma wanted to deliver to the, uh, our friends in Washington, D.C.? Well, I think there are two uh, aspects to this. On the one hand, I think President Ma is more cautious in uh, dealing with our international friends. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't want to uh, offend our American friends by being too vocal in his mm -hmm. transit stops. Uh, and since he already said that uh, the transit should be a transit, and therefore he tried to uh, keep the transit as low profile as possible. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, uh, we also see that the uh, American policies in mm -hmm. dealing with the transit of Taiwan's elected officials the highest elected officials hasn't changed at all. Mm -hmm. It's still following the same pattern that uh, you know, if a transit, it has to be a transit. It has to fall within the you know, guidelines mm -hmm. of the transit. No press, uh, you know, no major speech, and, and, and uh, no media. All mm -hmm. these kinds of uh, guidelines mm -hmm. are still there, and it's still very clear. And even if uh, President Ma wants to break away from the old patterns of the American guideline mm -hmm. in dealing with Taiwan presidential transit, it, it's going to be very difficult for President Ma to do so as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, do you think that's a message that President Ma want to send to China that I don't want to rock the boat and we will continue to improve relations between Taiwan and China? Well, I think that is uh, one of the aspects of uh, President Ma's foreign policy uh, guidelines that has uh, cross trade connotations to it. You know, on the one hand, uh, he said that uh, he's going to have a diplomatic truce with China. Yeah. And on the other hand, he's also saying that uh, the cross trade relations has a higher status than Taiwan's foreign relations. Mm -hmm. And if you put all this together, I think the picture is very clear that President Ma values relations with China much more than our relations with other countries. Mm -hmm. And since China is such a, a, a status in the, his foreign policy pursuit, and therefore all other relations have to subject to 
the uh, cross relations. Mm -hmm. And if China is going to get upset over some certain things, you know, President Ma, in his mind, mm -hmm. but you know, he, he might think that uh, we better think over it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, does that also give message to the, our American friends that, you know, we want to improve relations with China, so probably you don't have to do something that will antagonize China right now, in terms of timing, in terms of the way of cooperation? Well, I think that is exactly the American way of thinking about things. I don't want to put the words in the mouth of the American uh, administration officials, but the way I got it uh, from the administration officials in the final weeks uh, of my stay in Washington, D.C., is that the American government thinks that uh, the current government in Taiwan and its handling of the cross relations is very good and they mm -hmm. are very happy with it. And I think the reason why they are happy with it is because you know, the cross attention is brought down that's right. and there's no hostility, there's no uh, intention, there's no tension in between yeah. the two sides and the United States doesn't have to pay attention to uh, the cross uh, situation yeah. because it has other concerns right. and uh, since the administration, the Bush administration is coming to an end mm -hmm. very shortly, uh, of course they don't want to see the cross uh, temperature mm -hmm. uh, gets higher again mm -hmm. and therefore the U.S. Is, has that kind of uh, feeling exactly like what you described. They don't want things to uh, turn sour in between Taiwan and China. Mm -hmm. But how about security cooperation, especially military to military cooperation between the U.S. and, and Taiwan? Will that be affected by the so-called uh, diplomatic truce between Taiwan and China? I certainly hope not. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is because that is needed by Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And we hope uh, you know, the miniature procurement packages can uh, go, go ahead as soon as possible. That concerns Taiwan's survival. And I think in uh, American uh, way of uh, thinking about Taiwan, there are always two things in their mind. One thing is that they don't want tension in between Taiwan and China. And on the other hand, is that they want Taiwan to have the ability and the determination to defend itself. And therefore, uh, the Pentagon's cooperation with Taiwan in different aspects have always been going on. And as I said a little bit earlier, that in the last eight years, we see the greatest progress in Taiwan-U.S. Uh, security cooperation. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of uh, security cooperation is not going to be hindered, hindered by uh, China's effort if we can uh, make it a slow profile as, mm -hmm. po as possible. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, many dialogue series in between uh, Taiwan and the United States. We have uh, annual talks. We have uh, monetary talks. We have uh, mm -hmm. uh, Air Force talk and uh, army talks, all these kinds of things have been going on and they have been institutionalized. And as far as I can see, the United States is not likely to change its attitude on all this uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. And the uh, homeland security cooperation is also going on in between Taiwan and the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is being valued by the Bush administration as well. And that is one area we hope that Taiwan government can work doubly hard mm -hmm. to improve the homeland security cooperation in between the two countries. Mm -hmm. And apparently the so-called diplomatic truth is applied not only to Taiwan's relation with the U.S. and between China, mm -hmm. but also more importantly applied to the so-called diplomatic allies, the 23 mm -hmm. diplomatic allies that Taiwan has right now. So when we come back, we will talk about Certainly. the idea of so-called diplomatic truth and how can mm -hmm. we put it into mm -hmm. practice and whether there will be difficulties in doing that. Mm -hmm. So don't go away. We'll be back after these messages.